Welcome to another Promote the Truth lesson, teaching, and life learning session. Our subject right now is Mother's Day. Here we are upon another man-made holiday. Is it something that is good for us or is it bad for us? Is it something that draws us closer to Yahuwah or away from Yahuwah? What is this holiday called Mother's Day and how does it relate to our relationship with Yahuwah? As of the recording of this video, it is the day before what the world has deemed as Mother's Day. The question that we have to ask ourselves is where did Mother's Day come from? Is there any scripture anywhere in any translation that has an appointment that we are to celebrate Mother's Day? Well, First and foremost, we need to answer that question with an emphatic no. There is no scripture that gives us a appointed time to celebrate Mother's Day. Okay, there are things you might say that we do celebrate that are not in scripture. Those things that we celebrate that are not in scripture are they good or are they bad? Are they against Yahuwah or for Yahuwah? So if we have a, a celebration of a victory, if we have a get together, if we have a party and we're celebrating life, is anything wrong with that? No, I, I don't see any scripture that forbids a celebrating. We should celebrate. You know, Yahuwah says in the scriptures, rejoice. For this is the day that Yahuwah has made. So we should be celebrating every day. Every day we should celebrate ourselves, our loved ones, our life, and most importantly, Yahuwah through Yahusha HaMashiach, the Messiah, for giving us eternal life, for giving us the opportunity to be able to one day approach the throne boldly. But in order to approach, to approach the throne boldly, we have to have a clear conscience before Yahuwah. So on this subject of Mother's Day, which is a delicate subject, I'm telling you, it's delicate because it is a man-made tradition. So we need to go to the scripture and figure out, is this something that has a pagan origin, which means adverse to Yahuwah, against Yahuwah, from Shatan, Hashatan, Satan himself? Did he designate this appointed time for him? to take away from the appointed times of Yahuwah? I say yes. And I think after we spend some time together, we come together and we reason, maybe and hopefully you will want to honor Yahuwah and say yes. You see, Abraham, 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 he was known for tearing down idols as a youth. So I really believe that, that Yahuwah gave Abraham the opportunity and then the fulfillment of blessing so many nations because he had a zealousness. He loved to tear down idols from his youth. So I take this opportunity today in the spirit of our brother Abraham and tear down some idols. I'm so honored to do so. So let's dig in and let's go to some scripture here. Let's deal with the scriptures, not my opinion, not your opinion, not someone else's opinion, not mom or dad or sister or brother. I got to underline mom because we're dealing with Mother Day, Mother's Day. 
So not mom's opinion, even though we love and we honor our mother, not her opinion, because her opinion cannot overturn Yahuwah's opinion. So as we go to scripture, let's start out with the book of Shema, also known, or I should say sign name. I'm not going to say also known as. I want to say sign name. It's been assigned the name Exodus which is a corrupt assignment, but so you will know what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about here. I'm going to share my screen here, and we're going to be talking about the book of Shema, which means listen to Yahuwah. That's what the book means. Isn't it amazing that all the Hebrew words, primarily all the Hebrew words, have a meaning? Shema, listen. All the Hebrew names, I should say, have a meaning. Shema, Sham, listen, ah, to Yahuwah. Chapter 20, where Yahuwah himself writes the Ten Commandments with his own fingers, and he delivers them to Musha. Musha, the rescuer, is Yahuwah. So Musha, who led this movement, Elua, Aloha. Alua, the Alua, Yahuwah. Sign name, Elohim, not the correct word, because he is one, not plural. And Alua spoke these, all these words saying, I am Yahuwah, your Alua, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrium, misery, what we know as Egypt out of the house of slavery. You are to have no other mighty ones against my face. He's saying, don't let anything come between him and us in any shape, form, or fashion. So that should be a big signal sign that if there's ever any type of worship, if there's any, other, any type of honoring going on that could have some other mighty one come against his face, we are to put that away. We don't need any other mighty ones. We need one, Yahuwah. Now, I want to take special attention, starting in verse 3 of Shema, chapter 20, verse 3. You are to have no other mighty ones against my face. So let's focus. Let's not have any other mighty ones against his face. Then is take the focus to a spotlight, to a radiating beam in verse four. You do not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above or in the, which is in the earth beneath or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, Yahuwah, your Alua, am a jealous all. Means mighty one. All means mighty one. Visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. He says, when we make for ourselves a carved image, image imagination, whether the physical, if we carve it in our minds, that's an image. If we carve it out physically, that's an image. Anything which is in heavens above, earth beneath, on this earth, right? Because he's speaking from the heavens, meaning on the earth or in the waters under the earth, we don't make anything in, that's a carved image because he considers that what? What does he say here? He considers that hatred towards him. He says, I'm going to visit this to the third and fourth generations. If you do this, he considers it hate, and he's going to perpetuate it to the third and fourth generations. Now, many of us are wondering, deep down, be real, be, un be really real. I want you to understand what I'm saying here. If you can be real and raw right now, many of us have felt for years there's something not quite right. There's something wrong. 
what's happening, what we're feeling is third and fourth generation curses. That little weird gut feeling down in you and you're going, I've been praying, I've been hoping, I've been wishing for things to be better and be clear and me to have no confusion. But I keep having confusion. I keep having things come up that's throwing me off course. You want to know what that is? That's third and fourth generations that are perpetuating. You see, until somebody stops it, it keeps perpetuating. More than likely, at the time you're hearing me speak and teach what I'm teaching, more than likely, you are under a curse from mama, daddy, granddaddy, grandmama, great-granddaddy, great-grandmama, great-greats, those great-greats that did not honor and guard these commandments of Yahuwah. If they're not guarded, there is going to be a promise of what? A curse that will go down through multiple generations. That's how serious this is. You see, I made a decision once I knew, once my eyes were open, I made a decision to break the curse. I'm not going to have my son or my children live under this curse. And you got a choice and you have an opportunity to do the same. Let's keep reading. But look at that. Whenever you hear the word, but it, re, it, it means that everything I said before this, you don't have to worry about, or I'm about to change course. Yahuwah says, but showing loving commitment to thousands of those who love me and guard my commands. You see, that curse of third and fourth generations and that hatred towards Yahuwah, he says, I will blot that out if you love me by guarding my commands. So when we think of the subject Mother's Day, we got to ask ourselves, is it anywhere in the scriptures? No. So if it's not in the scriptures, where did it come from? Like literally, be conscious, be the person that's willing to reason and ask yourself, where did Mother's Day come from? If you just do a little bit of research, not a lot, it doesn't even take a lot. I suggest you dive deep. What if you just do a little bit of research? Just a little bit. You're going to find that Mother's Day is an ancient fertility observance. What? Mother's Day is an ancient fertility observance. Period. Do a little research, you'll find it. Do a lot, you might want to go into a repulsive feeling, actually even maybe throw up to think how the disguises of Satan have taken place in so many different subtleties and utilizing ancestry worship. Mama, daddy, grandma, granddaddy, aunts and uncles worship. We don't want to hurt their feelings. So we will go along to not hurt them, thus having something in front of Yahuwah's face. Because Yahuwah says, have nothing in front of my face. And he says, do not make an image of anything in your mind or physically of the heavens above on the earth or beneath the earth. So if this is for a fertility ritual, where did it come from? All right, I'm gonna give you some of the important cliff notes. You go dive in. Don't take my word for it. You do what I did. You go dive in and you tell me if you can prove this to be wrong, because I couldn't. And once I couldn't prove it to be wrong, I was shocked. 
And I've had my own mother tell me, I want you to honor me on Mother's Day. I said, Mom, I can't honor you just on Mother's Day. I honor you as my mother every day, but I can't pay special attention to you just because the world says do it. Was it easy? No. Was it worth it? Yes. How worth it? It's an eternal inheritance worth it. Can you have your salvation snatched because you choose to disobey Yahuwah's word? Yes, you can. Don't think you can't. Shaul, brother Paul. So Shaul, a.k.a. sign name Paul, he said, don't let me run this race and then at the end lose my crown. That means you can lose that crown. Yahuwah says, I am. Haya, the Hebrew words, I am. We are to live in the I am until he returns or we go back to the dust. So where does it come from? You'll be shocked to know that Mother's Day is homage to the fertility observance of the ancient, quote, goddess, Asherah. Who is Asherah? Who is Asherah? You ever heard of Nimrod? Nimrod, the first man to claim to be a man, all mighty one, sign named God, he slept with his mother, had sexual relations with his mother, whose name is Asherah. And they gave birth to a child called Tammuz. And once this was played out and all these people began to follow, Nimrod was hunted down by his ancestors. Go check out what Noah did. I should say Nua, what he did to Nimrod. It's amazing. So Nimrod was taken out. Tammuz, taken out. And it says that they wailed for Tammuz. They believed that Nimrod reincarnated and became the sun god and that his mother slash wife, Ashura, is the, quote, mother G-O-D. And so they have this observance. It just so happens they have it every year in the pagan, Roman pagan month titled May, or Maya, on which day of the Gregorian calendar? Sunday. <laughs> so Nimrod, is reincarnated as the, quote, sun god. And his mother is to be, slash wife, is to be esteemed to pay her homage throughout all time based on Roman rule and sun god worship. She is to be honored on a certain day every day year on the Gregorian Roman pagan calendar on Sunday, we are told to celebrate unknowingly Asherah. How you feel about that? Now you got to take some time and answer, how do you feel about that? And then you should take some time and go research it. And then you should take some time and go through this progression with me. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to another scripture. So I'm gonna share my screen again, and we're gonna go to Debarum, sign name Deuteronomy. And we're gonna go to chapter four, and we're gonna go down to verse 15, and we're gonna read through verse 20. You notice it says, idolatry forbidden. 
That's the chapter, that's, that's the header there, right? Verse 15, chapter four, Debarim. Therefore, diligently guard yourselves, for you saw no form when Yahuwah spoke to you at Horah, out of the midst of the fire, lest you should do corruptly and shall make for yourselves a carved image in any form of any figure the likeness of male or female. Mother's Day, female idolatry. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth or the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the heavens, the likeness of any creature that creeps on the ground or the likeness of any fish that is in the water. What's the symbolism for a lot of Christianity? It's the fish symbol, ichthus. That's idolatry that is in the water under the earth. And let, unless you lift up your eyes to the heavens and shall see the sun, sun God worship, or the moon, Monday, moon's day worship, and the stars, horoscopes, astrology, all the hosts of the heavens, and you be drawn away into bowing down to them and serving them, either knowingly or unknowingly. See, a lot of people think you gotta be going through, uh, 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 going through all these rituals. No, Satan, he works that way for the off the charts people, but he knows he can get the masses through subtleties, through group dynamics bowing down to them and serving them, which Yahuwah, who? Which Yahuwah, your Elua, has allotted to all peoples under the heavens. So he says that Yahuwah has given these things, but he did not give these things for us to worship those things. But Yahuwah has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace. Don't you want to come out of the iron furnace first and foremost of your mind? Come out of this. But Yahuwah has taken you out, taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace, out of Mitzrayim. That's where we get the word misery from. Egypt, is the real name is Mitzrayim, where we get the word misery. And he's done this to be his people and inheritance as it is today. This is eternal. Do you believe the word is still living? Yes. Do you believe the word is still true? Yes. Are you descendants of the truth? Are you descendants of Yahuwah? Yes. So this word is for you. Now, I want to take you to Yerma Yahu. Let's go over to Yerma Yahu, sign name Jeremiah. Let's go to verse six. Let's go to chapter 16. And let's look at verse 19 through 21. Let's take a look. Oh, Yahuwah, right here. Oh, Yahuwah, my strength and my stronghold and my refuge. In the day of distress, the nation shall come to you from the ends of the earth and say, quote, our fathers have inherited only falsehood and futility, and there is no value in them. Would a man make mighty ones for himself? which are not mighty ones, Yermayahu, sign named Jeremiah, was speaking of the end time, which is coming. And it looks to be coming pretty soon. And he's saying that people are going to finally look up and see that we've been tricked, we've been fooled by all these false teachings and all, this, all these traditions. Why did Yahusha argue all the time with the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Why? He says, you lay hold, you keep the hold of men's traditions, but lay aside the commandments of the Father. <clears throat> Think about that. That even made me cough. To lay aside the traditions of the Father, to hold on to men's traditions, come on. Yahushua was arguing with them all the time. And what's going to happen if we don't get people to snap out of this, which we don't have to go bang them over the head. We got to give them a good message. 
You see, the message I'm speaking right now is just a good message. You know it, and I know it. You feel it, and I feel it. And if you don't feel it, you need to get down on your knees and cry out to Yahuwah, show me the truth. If what I'm hearing today be true, speak to me. He will. You're not here just by accident. You're here to learn and to apply the truth. So here we go. Are you going to be the one that gets fooled and gets tricked and loses your crown? As Shaul, son named Paul, talked about? Are you going to be that person that says, we've only inherited falsehood and futility? There's no value. See, if I can't use it to purchase eternal life through the gift, look at that, purchase through the gift, I get to have eternal life purchase. What's my purchase? My choice. That's all I got to pay is a choice. I can't, I cannot do anything except, except the grace that Yahusha paid for me, but I can do everything through him that strengthens me by using my choice to follow him. And he says he will send me his spirit to give me the strength to, so I won't be confused. I'm not confused at all. And I'm empowered and I'm excited. This is the day that Yahuwah has made. I'm so glad to tear these idols down. So watch this. Let's keep going. Brother Yerma Yahu, chapter 51. Chapter 51, let's check him out. What does he say in verses 44 and 45? I jotted down just a couple of notes as the Spirit was talking to me right before I came on this video. I asked the Spirit to reveal to me. It gives me scriptures. I write, jot down a couple of notes, and then I'll start talking to you about it. But it's saying, let's talk about Yerma Yahu, Chapter 51, verse 44 and 45. And I shall punish Baal. This is Baal there. You ever heard of Baal? Baal? The false mighty one? In Babel. Babylon. I shall punish Baal. So you, you remember that Ali Yahu, Elijah, sign name Elijah, said, choose this day. Right? He said, you got to make a choice. When he went to Mount Carmel, he says, look, if your mighty one be true or my mighty one be true, we'll watch him work today. Yah Yahushua, a son named Joshua, who came after Musha, Moses, he said, choose this day whom you will follow, whether it be Baal or Yahuwah. As for me and my house, we will follow Yahuwah, verse 44. I shall punish Baal in Babylon, Babylon, and I shall make him spew out what he has swallowed, and the nations shall no longer stream to him. Even the wall of Babel, Babylon shall fall. And look what it says. Here's your warning, everybody. Come out of her midst, my people. Come out of her. Babylon has spread throughout the entire world. The harlot Yahuwah said, come out of her, my people, and let everyone deliver his being from the burning displeasure of Yahuwah. Come out. What you going to do? What are you going to do with this message? Mother's Day comes from sun God worship. Prove that. I believe that. I've searched that to see that to be true. It's so obvious that it's ridiculous. And yet we got to make some decisions. We got to choose this day whom we're going to serve, whether it be Baal, a.k.a. the Lord, also known as Baal, which we've been tricked to cover Yahuwah's name, or Yahuwah. As for me and my house, we will serve Yahuwah. And I serve it mightily and gladly. And again, in the spirit of Abraham, which is named Abraham, Abba, Father, Ah, Yahuwah, um, of multitudes, the Father, 
Yahuwah of multitudes. Yahuwah wants to build the remnant into a multitude. But you got to be willing to accept these truths. You got to be willing to act upon these truths. So some of you say, what, Jay, what should I do? Tell me, what do I need to do? Simple, guard the commandments. And Yahuwah says, if you do that, you will love him. When he says, have no other mighty ones against my face, guard it. When he says, do not make an image in the heavens above, on this earth, or the earth beneath, and who's on this earth? If your mother still walk on this earth, you're not to serve her, you're to honor her. You're to serve Yahuwah, and you're to witness to mama. You want to give her the greatest gift ever? The greatest Mother's Day gift ever is the truth of Yahuwah that Mother's Day is a pagan holiday. It's not a, quote, holy or set-apart day. It's not an appointed time. There's times we can celebrate, but this is not the time to celebrate. This is the time to warn. This is a time to scream from the mountaintops to say, come out of her, my people. My people shall know my name. Did you notice that Yahuwah closed that last verse out? Did you notice how he closed that out? You notice he says, come out of her midst, my people, and let everyone deliver his being from the burning furnace. Of who? Of Yahuwah. Yahuwah. He says, I'm going to burn this stuff up. There's an appointed time that he says he's going to burn the earth. He says he's no longer going to kill it by water, but he says he will burn it by fire. And those that he puts his mark on, which is his name, which is in their forehead, their foremost thoughts. And the only way it can be in your forehead is if you love him by guarding his commandments. Yahuwah has sent this message to you today. I am honored and blessed to deliver it. These words I speak, I promise you, they are not my own. They're not my own. These words are not my opinion. I know with all my being, they're inspired from Yahuwah Ruach, the set-apart spirit that wants you to know this and wants to tap other people to let them know the truth. Share the truth with your mother with love, not hatred, not bitterness, no arguing. We don't argue here. You just share it. Mom, I can't do that because I'm following Yahuwah. I want to thank you for giving me birth so that I could have the opportunity to find the truth. And the greatest gift I can give back to you is the truth. That mom, come out of her. Don't be deceived. Choose this day who you're going to follow. Whether it be Asherah, come on. Nimrod, come on. Sun God worship, come on. Satan, come on. Yahuwah. So I love, love, love. Everybody that understands that Yahuwah is the most important word that's ever existed. And he's put this word in my mouth, in my heart, and in my forehead. And he wants to put it in you. And if it's in you, you're going to do what I'm doing. You're going to stand for him and guard his commandments and break that curse so that we can have third and fourth generations of prosperity, of joy, of truth. Hopefully you enjoyed this message. Share with somebody else that needs to know the truth. That's what we do here. We promote the truth. Thank you. Love you. Bye-bye.